Should I, should I leave the fairy ears on for the rest of the podcast? I don't <laughs> And welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 251. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> this is a podcast about spinning. No, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, this is like the 10th time that I'm recording this. I cannot word today, it's crazy. This is the Rhinebeck slash Indian Tangled recap episode. Uh, it's going to follow a normal format, but with some uh, recap tidbits sprinkled in throughout the episode, so I hope you are game for that. I am gonna talk more in depth about the events that happened at Indian Tangled and Rhinebeck, so stay tuned for the end of the episode if you are curious to see, if you wanna see some footage from the event or hear more about it. Uh, but at the top of the episode right now, I'm just, I just wanna give a huge, huge thank you to everybody who stopped by my booth, bought some yarn, said hello. It, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it was, an amazing event. It was overwhelming, but in the best possible way, if I could describe it as such. And again, thank you, thank you so much to everybody. Uh, it, it was it was a whirlwind, and it was it was magical. So thank you so much. Uh, and and I, I also want to give a huge thank you to Danielle. Uh, she co-hosts the Yarn Pin podcast with Karen Posniak of Do You Knit, and she approached me at my last trunk show uh, at Do You Knit and said, "Hey, Kristen, if you need help checking people out at Indian Tangled, I'd be more than happy to help you." And I totally took her up on it because last year was crazy sauce. It was. It was. I, I definitely needed help this year, so I took her up on that, and she was amazing. So Danielle. Thank you so much for all of your help. You were, you were truly a trooper. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's yeah. I, I can't word. Thank you so much. Uh, and and to my husband Dennis, who also helped check people out. I don't know what I would do without him. The two of those guys were just, you know, they were, they were such troopers. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for helping me out because it was a madhouse in there. It was mobbed. It was so much fun because I got to meet viewers of the podcast, people who, uh, you know, had been wanting to get my yarn for a lot, for a while and finally had the opportunity and it, yeah. And I, I got to meet people too, that I have only known through either their podcast or their Etsy shops or their online shops. It was just such, again, it was a whirlwind, but at the same time, it was like a knitter's Disneyland because everywhere I looked, I'm like, I know you, I know you, you don't know me, you know me, but I don't know you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was very surreal, but in the best possible way. And um, I, I will share with you some of my haul that I got from Indian Tangled and uh, also Rhinebeck. If you're not familiar, uh, Indian Tangled is a trunk show that happens uh, the Friday of Rhinebeck weekend. So it was this past Friday, October 20th, and uh, it, it features a whole bunch of indie dyers in the industry and it was, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger every year. It's crazy. Uh, they're def I, if I had to imagine, they're probably going to get a bigger space next year because there was literally no place to move in that space. Uh, it was at the Best Western in Kingston, New York, which is not too far from uh, from the Dutchess County Fairgrounds where Rhinebeck happens. And yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, it was a wonderful event. So thank you and big kisses and hugs to everybody who stopped by. Um, again, I, I met just, yeah, I'll talk more about it at the end of the episode. Otherwise I, I could gush I could gush for hours, but <laughs> anyway, uh, I have a lot of territory to cover in this episode, so I'm going to try and keep things moving along uh, in a timely, in a timely manner or steady pace, if you will. Uh, but if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about, um, a Vlogtober, my Vlogtober series, where I was challenging myself to vlog every single day in the month of October. I really don't know what the heck I was thinking because <laughs> this was not the month to do it. Um, I want to say I was I was going I was going strong uh, up until the final week where I was prepping for Indi my Indian Tangle trunk show, and yeah, just work got the better of me, and I had to call it. I was like, you know what, I've, <laughs> I've got to focus on dyeing yarn and 
making sure that I'm all prepped. So unfortunately, vlogging had to take a back seat. Uh, and, and October is almost over, I cannot believe it. Uh, but I am hoping to get a couple more Vlogtober videos out there just to, you know, why not? I, I think I can squeeze them in and, uh, but anyway, I'm sorry if you were looking forward to, uh, if you were keeping up with my Vlogtober episodes, just to give you a little heads up. Um, unfortunately I was, it was, it was virtually impossible for me to keep up with it, but I, again, I'm going to try and squeeze a couple more videos in before the end of October. So yes. I think that is it. Um, we have a couple of knit-alongs that are coming to a close. Uh, the first one is the Damiaka Lopa Cardigan, a pattern by Pinay Gori. And I am co-hosting that knit-along with the lovely and amazing uh, Ellie of Skein Dare Knits. And she finished her cardigan eons ago. I did not get to finish mine. Um, the goal was to finish my Damiaka Lopa uh, for Rhinebeck. That was going to be my Rhinebeck sweater, but it was just, I still have so much to do on it and I, I could not take the pressure of finishing it at the time. So I, I called it, I said, you know what, I'm gonna hold off on finishing and wait until after Rhinebeck. And you know what, I'm glad I did because the weather was beautiful. It was super sunny. It was in the mid, I wanna say mid to upper 70s uh, Fahrenheit. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in Celsius, but uh, yeah, it was just, really beautiful weather. I would have been dying if I wore my my, my Lady Flea cardigan uh, to Rhinebeck. Uh, but I did see so many wonderful Flea cardigans there. There were a couple of uh, wonderful ladies that came up to me that they had their Flea cardigans and they wanted to get a photo and I was like, but I don't even have mine and I felt so bad. But theirs were absolutely beautiful and I'm so glad that they came up and said hello to me and they're, you know, I just really enjoyed seeing their finished objects in person and yeah it was just wonderful getting to chat with them and yeah I'm, I'm gonna finish my cardigan very very soon it's I'm so close I'll show you in a minute but uh yes uh but yes that uh knit along is coming to a close October 31st Halloween so if you are participating in the knit along be sure to get your um your finished objects posted in uh my fo thread in the yarngasm ravelry group and also in Ellie's thread in the Skander Knits uh, podcast Ravelry group. So double dipping is highly encouraged. Uh, there are going to be giveaway prizes and the like. So uh, yes, anyway, very, very excited about that. Uh, and yes, all of your photos that have been posted in those threads have been beautiful. So I haven't been commenting. I've been so far behind on commenting, but I have been pop popping my head in there just to see all your beautiful makes and the like. So um, yes, okay. Uh, the next knit along that is coming to an end is the Marled Magic Cal, which I am co-hosting with Lara of uh, Jinx Yarns and the Dyer's Notebook podcast. And uh, I, have, I have a tale of woe to, to discuss with you about that. But uh, in the meantime, yes, that knit along is also ending uh, October 31st, Halloween slash November 1st. I have to double check the action. I, I don't know if we set the end date for October 31st or November 1st, one of the two. I'll pop it down in the down bar. But uh, yeah, Lara finished hers, it's beautiful, and all of you ha who have been posting in the FO thread, oh my gosh, <sighs> you guys are amazing. Uh, I sadly, should I talk about the Tale of Woe now? I might as well. All right, I'll chat about the Tale of Woe. <sighs> so as you know, I'm co-hosting this knit along with Lara. It's our second annual knit along, and as I mentioned, she finished hers, and I was dearly, dearly falling behind, and I'm, yeah, anyway. <sighs> Here it is. I'm still not done with clue one, and after much thought and, uh, by the way, this is the, the Marled Magic Shawl, a pattern by Stephen West. It's It looks like such a fun pattern in it, and the finished object is wonderful. However, I'm not enjoying the process of it. I just, for some reason, the drive and motivation to work on this is just not there. And I keep looking at it and I feel guilty that I'm not working on it. And I'm as I'm knitting on it, I'm just not really feeling it, unfortunately. So after much delegation, I, I've decided it's, I'm gonna frog it. I'm not enjoying it. It's not getting any more love for me, unfortunately. But here's where I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it is Tale of Woe, but at the same time, it definitely is like a weight off my shoulders. I don't, you know, because when I feel obligated to knit on something, it's just not fun. And 
I really want to be more smart about my knitting and not feel, feel like anytime like that feeling of obligation is there, it's not going to happen. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where this is going. So it's unfortunately getting the ribbit and uh, yeah, you live and you learn. So it happens. It happens. You know, if you are not enjoying your knitting, there's no reason why you should be working on it. Frog it, throw it away, what have you. Put it in Area 52. So, all right, moving along, we have some FOs, or I have some FOs to share with you. Uh, first one is a ho. So, let me go get that. And, so yes, I, when it came to bringing knitting along to Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck knitting, I guess, I was smart about it. I generally bring a whole bunch of projects with me and I only end up working on one thing. And that one thing is normally a sock, which because I only have so much attention to devote <laughs> while knitting on at events like these. So uh, I brought a pair of socks with me. I brought a pair of socks and I have a hoe and I don't have a sock walker on me, I apologize. But uh, this is Trekking Yarn and I purchased this at P-Town Pearl in Provincetown, Massachusetts uh, two years ago, I wanna say and finally stash dived and decided I wanted to knit these. So one sock down and one more to go. So here's where I am on the second sock. That is where I am on that. And it's living in my fringe supply bag, which has some new swag, you guys. It has some new flair. I actually stopped off at the Harrisville Designs booth at, in, at Rhinebeck and picked up one of their sheep, uh, fringe supply sheep badges and a little frog, little sad frog uh, badge because why not? Nothing nothing too major to write home about because a hoe is a hoe and one more sock to go and that totally rhymes and yes. Anyway, uh, the next finished object that I have is my Rhinebeck shawl because as I mentioned, I did not finish my Demyaka Lopa which was supposed to be my Rhinebeck sweater. But I finished my amulet shawl, which is a beautiful pattern by Helen Stewart, uh, Curious Handmade Designs, and it is done. And this is knit out of uh, my hand dyed yarns in colorway A is Moon Cusser, and then colorway B is Plume. And it's on my Blitz base, which has gold Stellina in it. So it's incredibly sparkly, but you know what? I love it. Sparkles, glitter. It makes everything better. So that's what I say like when in doubt just go with the glitter because it's so it's wonderful Anyway, uh, so yeah, this was my Rhinebeck shawl. It was perfect for the weather as I mentioned It was like in the in the mid 70s mid to upper 70s. So this definitely kept me At a good at a good body temperature <laughs> I want to say I didn't even have a card. I brought a cardigan, but I didn't even keep it on because it was it was just um super warm and I think I'm going to give this like another blocking because I, I will admit I did block this rather quickly and the points didn't turn out as or I don't I think I let it set as long as I should have let it set but the, the teeth on the, the lace edging I feel like they could be a little bit more pointy so I might give this another blocking pass uh, just to kind of emphasize those those points so, but this was such a fun knit to work on. I cast this on, I brought this um, as when Dennis and I went to Barbados this past summer, uh, we, I cast this on as my vacation knitting. And I have to say this was the perfect project because it was so intuitive. I didn't have to devote much uh, brain power to it. And the, the lace charts, at, the eyelets were so, as I mentioned, like very intuitive. Um, yeah, it was perfect to knit on the plane, to knit on the beach, and that's what I really love about Helen's patterns. They're just, the majority of them are incredibly intuitive, easy to memorize, and just, yeah, they're just wonderful. So, yeah, that's that's my that's my finished object <laughs> this week. Um, do I have, I do have another finished object, I'm sorry. This one I whipped up super quick. I was very surprised, but uh, for my trunk show, where is it? Um, I brought back my cocoon base, which is an iron weight, 100% uh, superwash BFL iron weight yarn. And I realized I did not have a sample to show at the trunk show. So I was browsing Ravelry and it dawned on me that my friend Becky Sorensen of the Stringing It Together podcast just came out with a new pattern, hat pattern and cowl pattern called the Pinolith Collection. And I stumbled on it again. I was like, that would be perfect. So I cast this on and finished I cast this on, 
a day before and finished the next day and it was such a quick super knit um and i you guys highly recommend this pattern i i don't know i don't know what this like motif i don't know i just really like it I, don't, I can't describe it it's different it's really different such an enjoyable pattern to knit as well i'm going to try it on without giving myself crazy hat hair but if you're looking for holiday gifts i highly recommend this pattern it's Hat. Like it's meant to be a fitted hat, but mine turned out to be a little slouchy, which I love. I love slouchy hats. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that mine is superwash yarn. So when you block superwash, it definitely like grows a little longer. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But I really love the way that the you know hand dyed yarn works with the uh, color work motif. Um, so yeah, and I made a pom pom. Uh, I made the pom pom with my loom, uh, which is like a wooden fork thing. I can't describe it, but I'll put a link to it, but it's genius. You can make tassels with it. You can make pom-poms. And this was way easier than, uh, using one of those pom-pom plastic pom-pom makers. It was, you just wrap it around a million times or however many times you want, tie a knot in the middle, pull it off and cut the edges and you have a pom-pom. So, uh, yeah, again, let me see what else did I want to say about this. Uh, the yarn that I'm using again is the Cocoon Base in the I Am No Bird colorway and then Grim for the color work motif. And it's just a super, yeah, super fun knit. And I learned something too. Learned two things while knitting this pattern. One, uh, how to do a German twisted cast on, which is brilliant. I'm I know Tommy from Scroll Pie Productions became a total convert after learning it from Becky. She has a, again, Becky has like a really awesome uh, tutorial on how to do the German twisted cast on, very clear. Uh, and then also, uh, if you look on the bottom, on the inside, the floats. Um, well, first of all, so if you look at the motif, you have a motif here and you have a motif here in the back. So if you look at this area, you have to imagine that you're carrying, from this point to this point, it's a very long way to carry color B to this section right here. So there's a trick that you do called, it, it, there's a trick to catching your floats on the opposite end. So here you can see that I carry the yarn, the black yarn, but then caught it every five stitches or give or take every five stitches. Um, so it's really genius, I think. Um, so it looks like a simple pattern, but if you're new to color work or, you know, there are certain techniques that you still have to learn, highly recommend this, blah, 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 highly recommend this pattern. It's, it was just such a fun, quick knit. I think I'm going to knit a couple of these for holiday presents. Um, so yeah, definitely check out, uh, I will link to the pattern. If you buy the collection together, I believe you get 20% off on both the, the hat and the cowl. So hop on that, you guys. Uh, yeah, and I think I have to secure the pom-pom just a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love this. This is going to be my new favorite hat to wear this winter, I think. And it's so cozy. So, yay! Um, yeah, so I believe that is it for finished objects. Uh, moving along to works in progress. I put a little bit of a dent in my... Damiaka Lopa, as I talked about. So I'm still in Sleevesville, <laughs> but this is where I am. Uh, but I think I have a little bit more ways to go, a couple more decreases, but slowly but surely it's getting done. Uh, and yes, this is a pattern by Pinegori. And this is the back and this is the front. It's going to be steaked, which I've never done before, but I'm very excited to dive into. I can't, I actually, I am looking forward to steaking. I, I think it's something that, I don't know why it doesn't freak me out. I'm, I'm actually very excited about learning how to steak finally. Uh, I've been knitting for a really long time and it baffles me that I haven't learned to steak yet. So very much looking forward to that. Uh, and the yarn is Jameson Spindrift in several colorways. I'm totally blank. I know this is, this mauve color is cyclamen. It's a light, uh, this is a light, Heather Gray, and then we have some, um, I think, sea glass or I don't know, dewdrop. I think this like light green teal here is dewdrop. I don't know what this golden mustard color is, but um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. So yeah, this will be done <laughs> before before the first snowfall, I imagine. So okay, um, that's where I am with that. Yes, and this week I actually put some. I gave some love to my Selvu Mittens, which is a pattern by 
Skein Your Knits. She has the Selbu Mitten Club that's currently underway. And I finished, well, almost finished uh, one mitten. So here's the first one. Uh, and then I just have to knit the thumb, but this is the back side. And then here's where I am with the second mitten. So again, I want to finish, I actually want to finish these before I start working on my Demi Akalopa cardigan again. But uh, here's where I am with the second mitt. I just started the color work for the, or started the uh, thumb gusset increases. So, and the yarn that I'm using to knit these is again, my hand dyed yarn, Volenvine yarns in my Smitten DK base, which is 100% uh, Merino nylon cashmere, DK weight, and guys, these are so, so soft. Um, so yeah, again, I'm gonna finish knitting on, knitting these before I put another dent in my, uh, my flea cardigan, uh, but I'm just having so much fun knitting these and I can't wait for them to be bit finished so I can cast on another pair of Selbo mittens. I think this is going to be the winter of mittens. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I think a lot of people are going to get mittens for Christmas gifts, which is interesting for me to say because normally I'm, I consider myself a selfish knitter, but I'm so excited about knitting mittens that I think I'm, I don't know, it's a pipe dream. It would be really nice to knit a lot of mittens this winter. So uh, yeah, and Ellie just released, uh, I believe her latest pattern. So anyway, she's just cranking out the mitten patterns, which is amazing. I, you know, it's every pattern that she releases, I'm like, I wanna knit that, I wanna knit that. So anyway, lots of mittens to choose from uh, after I finish these, so yay. Uh, so I think, is that it? Yeah. That is all I've been working on. Uh, that's all I've been knitting on this week. It's it's just been so crazy coming down from my Rhinebeck high that, I don't know, I think, I feel like I need a break, you guys. Um, I did take Monday off, uh, but at the same time, I still feel a little, a little frazzled, a little worn out, and yeah, it's, I, I just have to figure out Maybe not next week, but the week after, I might give myself a little break because I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the fry, you guys. Um, but anyway, I'm digressing. Let's move along to sewing, or should I chat about? No, let's do haul. Let's do, let's do the haul. All right, the Indian Tangled slash Rhinebeck haul. I went a little crazy. Not too crazy. I, I, I was, I was quite restrained. It's very rare that I let myself go crazy when it comes to yarn shopping at events. Um, well, that's kind of a lie, but when, when it's when it's Rhinebeck, Indie Untangled, maybe Vogue Knitting Live, or Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I give myself permission to go a little crazy because I, I'm not gonna lie, it feels really good to do that sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, but like I said, I didn't get go too terribly crazy at, at, at this past weekend. So uh, I got myself a new tote bag. Uh, this is the, the latest design from Fringe Supply. It's their, it's really, really fun actually. It's, uh, it says knitting accessories and it just has all the little tools and notions that you typically would find in a knitter's project bag. Uh, you know, you have like a swatch, a and they have like little notes at the side that says gauge swatch. Hee <laughs> hee, no one ever does this. And then they have like a circular knitting needles, like, oh, there they are. And then they have this thing, this pokey thing, and cat hair. Yep, that that's about right. Um, and then a, a key where it's like, is this yours? And yeah, this little jumbled mess right here that says don't ask. So I thought this was really fun. I had to get it um, because why not? And yeah, so this is holding Le Hall, but although I will admit I've been using this as my purse for the past week um, or since I since I got it and it's been wonderful. Uh, so, okay, since this is on top and it's very fragile, I'll talk about this first. Uh, well, first of all, I did give myself a rule saying that I'm, Fiber is totally off limits for me. I said, I'm not getting any fiber this trip. I have so much fiber in my stash that I still have to work through. And I will be totally honest, spinning has been taking a back seat for quite some time. So um, I did not allow myself to buy fiber. Although there were, there were, there was quite a bit of fiber that I wanted to buy, but I just said, no, no, Kristen, no. And, I, and I'm proud of myself that I didn't, but I had no business buying a spindle but since I didn't really promise myself that I wouldn't get one, um, I do love collecting spindles. Even even though I don't use all of my spindles, I have a few that I really, really like. Um, 
This is one that's been on the list that I have not been able to get uh, online because they, they do sell out. Uh, Jenkins Spindles. Uh, every time I try to get one, I've kind of given up on their updates just because, number one, I haven't been spinning as often. And yeah, it's I was never able to keep up with their updates or every time that I did catch one of an update, they were sold out or anyway. <laughs> I finally found a booth that was selling them uh, and this one just spoke to my soul. It's ebony wood and it is a lark. Yeah. I have a soft spot for Turkish spindles and this one is so incredibly well made. I have just really been enjoying spinning on it. You can see that I've already been doing a little bit of spinning on it. Yeah. So it's uh, one, I want to say like one of their medium sized, they have the finches, which are small. And I first got one of them uh, through watching Sharon. She has the knit style podcast, which is an awesome podcast. You guys should check it out. She's hilarious. Her husband steals the show, Rich. He's awesome. And he's just started knitting too. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Check out her podcast. But she first uh, mentioned, or I first learned about uh, Jenkins Spindles through watching her podcast. And I am so in love with this thing. It is, I think, by far my favorite spindle ever. Um, and I like the reason why I love Turkish spindles is because it's kind of like an art wrapping the yarn. You go over two arms and under one, over two arms and under one, over two arms and under one when you wrap the yarn around the base and you get this little turtle. Um, and I love the kind of like weave that it creates around around the um, the spindle when you wrap it on. I'm sorry, my spindle dialect is just not up to game. Uh, but anyway, it's it's the, the crafting and the making that's important, right? Not the not the lingo. Anyway, <sighs> anyway, one day I'll get it all. One day it'll all make sense to me, and I will I will know this stuff like that. But anyway, I've just truly been enjoying working on this spindle, and I've just been spinning a little fiber bump from Hobbledehoy. Um, so yeah, anyway, highly recommend these. And what's really cool is that he signs, uh, he signs all of his his spindles. So this is made entirely of ebony wood and it's 0.95 ounces, so just under uh, an ounce, which is perfect for me because I really I enjoy spinning really fine yarns. Uh, so that's 27 grams and I I cannot speak more highly about this spindle. It is just wonderful. So I'm I think you're going to see a little bit more spinning for me in the coming weeks. So <laughs> fingers crossed I I stay true to my word. But um yeah, these are incredibly well made. If you can get your hands on one, highly recommend it. Uh, it's just so beautiful. Anyway, um, highly recommend. So that is going over there. Uh, so I guess we'll talk about the Indian Tangled haul. Uh, I stopped over at the Hue Loco booth. Well, first of all, I met Nicole for the first time. Nicole of Hue Loco. She's an amazing indie hand dyer. If you have I, this is my first purchase from her. I've heard so many awesome things about her hand dyeing work. And yes, you guys, her stuff is awesome. Um, and so she did a collaboration with Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade Designs and the Grocery Girls. And you guys, it's amazing. So Helen Stewart designed a pattern called the Surprise Party Shawl uh, in collaboration again with Hugh Loco. So she designed the shawl, Hugh Loco dyed the yarn, and then named each uh, kit after a phrase from the Grocery Girls podcast, which if you haven't checked out the Grocery Girls podcast, oh my gosh, you guys, what are you doing with your lives? I got the I Can't Even kit. So all this yarn is going to go into knitting the surprise party shawl. And I'll try and pop a photo of it here so you can see. So the idea was she teased the pattern, uh, but then said that it wasn't going to launch until the eve of Indian Tangled. And total surprise to me because I didn't know Helen was gonna be there until like, a couple days before. And I was like, oh my gosh, so total surprise to me. It was, I, I was so excited to hear that she was gonna be there because I had met her for the first time at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And then she came a couple of times to the city and we all met up, uh, just had like a knit day. And it was, so, she, she is just a truly genuinely, truly genuinely, but she's just a wonderful person that I'm just, yeah, I'm just so happy that, you know, we've come to know each other and Helen, you were amazing. It was so great seeing you again. And uh, yeah, so anyway, this, this is just gonna be an awesome shawl. I can't wait to cast on. Um, and again, Nicole, she is, 
she's awesome. I, I, I really enjoyed getting to meet her finally uh, and, you know, actually getting my hands on her yarn. And the grocery girls too. It was... I feel like I should hold off on talking about this until the end of the episode, but I, I want to say that it, it, it just blows my mind how the internet has brought knitters together and when and when you meet in person it's just so it's not weird i'm not gonna I, you know I, I will be totally honest it's not weird meeting these people that you've only met on the internet because it seems like it would be because yeah you only know them through the internet but then when you see them in person it's like do you know me because i know you and you don't know me but i know you it's we all know each other really what it all comes down to we know each other in some shape or form <laughs> yeah it was just like yeah, I'm, I'm not making any sense. I feel like I'm blabbering and blubbering right now, but anyway, ugh, this is gonna be such an awesome shawl, a piece of art, if you will, and uh, just one big happy memory of this year's India Entangled. So cannot wait to cast that on. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel like I've just been blabbing for the past five minutes and not making any sense, but forgive me. It was a whirlwind, but yay. I got, I, can, I can't even, the other one was shut the front door. So that was more of like a blue, cool, uh, color palette, if you will. So this one, I'm, I'm even surprised. Nicole had my number. There's just mauve, mauve galore in here. So anyway, Nicole, it was so wonderful meeting you. Tracy, Jody, it was wonderful meeting you as well. And it's like, it just felt like we knew each other forever, which is crazy. But anyway, in, in the best possible way, of course. So yay, got that. Um, and then what else? I also stopped by Asylum Fibers, who is a new yarn dyer. She just went full time recently, and I first got wind of her through Christy Glass's podcast. Christy Glass Knits uh, interviewed her on her YouTube channel, and girl has got my number because she had the. I, I want to say she had the coolest booth. It was, it was pretty awesome. She had like the whole. She she has her aesthetic down and it is awesome. I walked in her room like this is this is amazing. So anyway, this was waiting for me on one of her hooks. <laughs> and yeah. Move. Are you surprised? No. But this is her solitary uh, base, which is a single 100% uh, superwash merino, and the colorway is called House Coat. Yes. So I love this. This is this move like speaks to my soul. How to get a skein of her yarn. And unfortunately, that is all I purchased from from uh, India Untangled. There were more booths that I wanted to check out and scope out, but unfortunately, it was just so mobbed. It was so mobbed, and I was pretty much tethered to my booth. It was crazy. So uh, I'm so glad that towards the end of the night, things finally died down, and I was able to kind of you know mosey around, say hello to some people, and you know do a little bit of shopping and the like, but uh, th those were my Indian Tangled purchases. Uh, and then Rhinebeck was the next morning. We stayed over at a hotel in Socrates, woke up. I woke up early, like seven o'clock, got ready. Dennis was still sleeping and I kind of had to wake him up. I'm like, I want to get there early because it's better to just get to the fairgrounds as early as possible. So I wanted to enjoy myself. I think that was the method behind me wanting to get there early because when you get there early, it's a little more tame. And I knew that after a certain hour, we would be tired and want to head out. So the goal was to get there as early as we could, which ended up being at like 10 a.m. <laughs> and then uh, we ended up leaving around like 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. So it worked out really well. I guess, let me talk about what I purchased. So these, these little puppies right here, uh, this is from Fox Hill Farm. And you guys, they make the best Cormo. Cormo is the new cashmere, you guys. It is just, oh, I could like fall asleep with my face in this right now. It is just so soft and squishy and oh, Cormo, Cormo, Cormo. Cormo is my new, my new thing. I love it. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I bought myself a sweat. I guess you could call this a sweater, a sweater's quantity. I'm, I'm a tiny person. So <laughs> I'm assuming I can make like a sweater of some kind with this. There's approximately, this is fingering weight Cormo. I don't know if you can see that. So it's just so scrummy and squish and oh, fingering weight. Uh, and it's just 100% Cormo wool, uh, 394 yards. So two skeins of that is about, um, 800 yards. I could probably make like a nice little cropped sweater or cardigan out of it. And yeah, I got, I got the dark, well, they had like a dark chocolate brown, but 
I think this kind of wants to be something cable-y and yeah, so I got like a grayish brown. It's really nice. And Michelle from, Michelle Wong from, uh, she uh, she's a designer, but she also had gauge intention and she stocked them for a while. And it's just, I can't speak more highly of their yarn. It is just so squish and how, how many times can I say squish? Anyway, so yeah, sweaters quantity worth of Cormo. New cashmere, you guys. This is gonna be all the rage, I think. If you have never tried Cormo, what are you doing with your life? Get some, get some now. <laughs> so there's that. And then, speaking of Cormo, uh, this one I'm, I don't know, I can't, it's not as soft as the Fox Hill, but this is, since the, this is Sincere Sheep. It was a yarn shop, but they happened to have a booth at Rhinebeck and they sold a bunch of different uh, labels and yarns and notions, but this is uh, the Sincere Sheep and it is their Cormo weight yarn, but I have to say it's 100% Cormo wool. Uh, it's from Nine Mile Ranch, Casey, Wyoming, but I have to say it's, um, it's not as soft as the Fox Hill. This is by far, I wanna say like, five or six times as soft, 10 times as soft as this. This is a little more rustic, I wanna say. Um, but yeah, it's it's mauve. <laughs> it's mauve, no surprise. Uh, and I was, you know, looking at it and I've heard good things about Sincere Sheep from Tommy of uh, Squirrel Pie Productions. She had just knit a shawl with them. And I, that's where I noticed the name. I was like, oh, Sincere Sheep. I would love to knit something out of it. I mean, it's nice yarn. It's very nice. It's just not as soft as the Fox Hill, but that did not deter me from purchasing it. Uh, so yeah, you get 500 yards in here and it's called uh, Deepest Desire. It's made in Napa Valley, which unfortunately it has been terribly affected by um, the wildfires that have been happening. So I hope that their sheep farm is okay. I have to look into that, but uh, yeah, that, that's kind of concerning, but uh, yeah, I hope, I hope they're okay. Uh, but the yarn is is beautiful. Um, you know the fact that it's a little bit more rustic and you know not as soft. It is soft, but I'm not gonna let that deter me from knitting with it because the color is beautiful. So yeah, and I want to say Fox Hill. Yeah, I didn't talk about uh, where Fox Hill Farm is located. So they're they're another local yarn uh, from Lee, Massachusetts. So yay, Massachusetts represent Cape Cod. Uh, yeah. So anyway another purchase and then of course uh from the same booth they had a whole bunch of of these shetland minis and i saw this colorway combination and i thought selby mittens they have to be a pair of selby mittens it's fingering weight uh and it's shetland fingering from the u.s a u.s yarn company and elemental effects is what they're called and for each skein it's 100 percent north american shetland wool you get approximately 118 yards per skein, and that's 107 meters, and one ounce, one ounce per skein. I think that that should be enough for two, two mittens, or fingerless mitts maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But I really love this colorway combination. It's all about the mustard and the gold this year, I think. Yeah. So there's that. And I'm totally. I'm sorry. I'm totally blanking on what the booth name was. Uh, but I believe they were local as well, but anyway. And of course, uh, I had to stop by Harrisville Designs. They had a really awesome booth there as well. Kind of a new to me. Um, I remember Ellie uh, had mentioned them and then Eric from Six Plus Twine, who's there. I got to see him finally. It feels like forever since I've seen Eric, but it was really nice to see him again. Uh, yeah, we hugged it out and it was awesome. Sebastian was there, so hi guys. Uh, and Ramona, I got to meet Ramona who is Ramona Firehorse, she's awesome. And yeah, anyway, again, Disneyland, Disneyland for knitters, it was wonderful. Uh, so anyway, back to, I, I, I digress. Um, so yeah, Harrisville Designs was there. And again, this is kind of a new to me type of yarn, but uh, yeah, I got a hold of their uh, Shetland fingering uh, weight yarn. And again, it's 100% Shetland wool. Um, let me see, well, I have confession. I purchased these online and they just came yesterday <laughs> because they did not have any of these in stock while I was there. And they said, you know, I just, here's a coupon code, free shipping, you know, get the colorways you want on our website. I'm like, done, done deal. But this is the one that I got from uh, their booth. And yeah, this is their Aubergine colorway. And yeah, as the label suggests, it's 100% Shetland wool. Uh, and Harrisville Designs is in Harrisville, North Hampshire, New Hampshire, sorry. 
North Hampshire, New Hampshire uh, in the United States. And let me see, yeah, it's just a two-ply scrummy fingering weight yarn. It's lovely. So yeah, this is aubergine. And then the two colorways, well, this is the colorway that I wanted to pair with it. Yeah, you can see I'm on a mustard kick. So these two, Selby Mittens. But yeah, I, I wanted this one, so I ordered this one, but while I was on the website and they had free shipping, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get these two. <laughs> Cause yeah, it's, can you blame me? No. Uh, so this is their Adobe colorway, which is a glorious shade of mauve, Tweety mauve. And as the color suggests, it's black. So yeah, I'm on a total cell blue mitten kick. Can you tell? Uh, so yeah, that that I think rounds up my my Rhinebeck Indian Tangled haul. I, again, I, I I'm proud of myself. I was relatively restrained. So yeah, that I just want to cast on all the things. No, is that is it just me? Or when you come back with a haul from all these events, don't you just do you want to cast on all the things or just hoard your yarn? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. So lately I've been trying to keep these episodes under 30 minutes or around, give or take, but I feel like it's just, this episode in particular is just going to be super impossible. So <laughs> thank you for sticking with me. And yeah, so that was the haul. Uh, moving along, I guess we'll move along to sewing because I have some sewing to share with you. If you couldn't figure out the elephant in the room, I am wearing my Rhinebeck dress. Uh, this was kind of an impromptu decision, but I had planned to make another Gertie dress. Uh, this is Gertie, this pattern is uh, Butter Patterns by Gertie, B65453. I'll try and pop an image of the pattern right here. But uh, yes, I had intended to make another one out of this fabric, and this is Cotton and Steel in their Shelley's uh, fabric. So it, it has a nice, a very nice drape, a very nice hand. It's not as stiff as quilting cotton. Um, and I, the first one that I made was also out of, um, Shelly's as well. So highly recommend this fabric for this pattern. It's a little slippery, a little fiddly to work with, but if you are thinking of making this pattern with some Shelly's fabric, uh, highly recommend using a rotary cutter to cut out your pattern pieces just to, um, make sure the pieces don't slip and slide under the, uh, make, make sure the fabric doesn't slip and slide under the pattern pieces, but yay, it's done. And I love this dress so much. So I'll stand around, do a little twirly too, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, this just falls right at my knee. Like the, the length of the skirt falls right at my, at my kneecap. So perfect length. I wear it with leggings and it's, I'm gonna get so much wear out of this over the winter, believe it or not. Cause yeah, I just, I honestly like wearing dresses over leggings and some boots and that, that's how I roll. So uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say about this. It fits perfectly. I did a uh, small bust adjustment when I originally, when I made the, when I cut out the pattern uh, for my, the first version. So fits me like a glove. So the only thing that I did differently with this version is that I added interfacing to the facing and it makes a world of difference. Uh, the only other thing that I wish I did was uh, understitched the facing uh, after installing it. I can still do it, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be a little fiddly to do it at this point, but I might just hand stitch it a little bit. Uh, but what the understitching does, it prevents the, the facing from poking out over the crease. Uh, and I ironed it down pretty well, so it doesn't do it as much, but here and there, like if I move too much, it like pops up over the, the crease over here. But anyway, what are you gonna do? Yay, it matched my Rhinebeck shawl. So I thought it was like the perfect combination and really, really, really happy that my idea panned out and highly recommend the pattern. And I'm trying to think what else I wanna say about it. Yeah, the, I, want, I wanna say like the hardest, the most difficult part about this pattern was the, uh, the straps because it has these little um, adjustable strap pieces. So getting that to all work out was a little fiddly, but I feel like the more I do it, the easier and more intuitive it'll get. But anyway, uh, really wonderful pattern, highly recommend it. Uh, and yeah, so anyway. Other than that, my, I guess the other big elephant, not in the room currently, but 
what you're all probably wondering, I don't know, my Halloween costume. <laughs> so I finished that yesterday. The dress is completely done. Uh, but if you are unaware, I'm going as Farah from the A Court of Thorns and Roses book series uh, by Sarah J Maas. And you guys, this dress makes me so happy. You have no idea. I did not want to take it off. I put it on last night, fits perfectly. Ex the, the only downside to this is that it spreads the glitter herpes like nobody's business. <laughs> and by glitter herpes, I mean glitter is the herpes of the craft world. It gets everywhere. And this was no exception because my whole house is covered in sparkles. Dennis is not, not very happy about that. He came home, he's like, there's glitter everywhere, Kristen. What is going on? I'm like, sorry, not sorry. But um, yeah. Here she is. I was debating whether or not to wear this on the podcast, but you know, I don't know. I, I just I decided not to. I wanted to wear my Rhinebeck dress. Maybe next week I will um, podcast in this dress so you can get a better idea of the fit or probably more likely post some photos. But here is the bodice. I guess I can do this for you, but uh, yeah, it's it has like these transparent sleeve thingies and then the bodice does like this has like a sweetheart effect yeah this isn't i'm sorry this is not happening <laughs> really what it is it's broadcloth with a layer of uh, silver tulle glitter tulle and the glitter tulle is the culprit of where the glitter is coming from and i sewed the seams together as if it was one piece of fabric and then i did this separate um sheath that goes over the bodice. Uh, the one mistake, I, because it's a costume, I'm not beating myself up about this, but the one mistake I did is that I, I sewed the lining backwards. You should be looking at the other side of um, this part. Uh, and it's, it's not fully boned, but the pattern did tell me to add some boning to the sides, which I appreciated because again, I, it's really hard for me to pull off strapless dresses. Um, but yeah, the boning definitely helps in that department. And I did an invisible zipper. So yeah, again, like I'm sure there was a more, there was a more elegant way of executing a back with a zipper. But again, it's a Halloween costume. This isn't gonna bother me. I have a wig that I'm gonna wear. It's gonna cover it. So this just goes straight up the back. And what else? Again, like I just, I did some co contrasting waistband. <sighs> Yeah, it's super, it's a full length gown. So it goes all the way down to the floor. And I just did like all these layers of, uh, there's a layer of broadcloth, a layer of tulle, and then this other sheath fabric that goes on top. And this glitter is, this fabric picked up the glitter from the tulle. There were some significant alterations that I did to the pattern. Uh, and I wanna say I'm so happy I did because it fits like a glove. Um, so let me show you the pattern. And I'm, I'm very proud of myself uh, for doing this because I was not expecting it to turn out as well as it did. So here's the pattern. It's McCall's M6893. And I did a hybrid of this. I took the skirt from these two versions and then morphed it with uh, this pattern piece up here. So uh, basically what I did, I elongated the sleeves. Uh, so I had to cut out a totally new pattern piece for that. Uh, that was that was interesting, uh, <laughs> first for me. And then the other thing is that the smallest bust size on here. So I cut out the smallest pattern piece and um, the bust was, the finished size of the bust would still be too big. I believe it was like a 34 and I'm a 32. So I had to figure out a way how to downsize that. And um, the way I was originally doing it was I was just, it, it did not make any sense. I can't even describe it to you, but I looked on uh, YouTube where you usually go for tutorials on how to do these things. And I found this amazing tutorial uh, by Professor Pincushion. And she shows you how to uh, downsize the bust area of a pattern piece, even if, you don't, if the pattern doesn't come with it. So it's called the pivot method, but I will link to the video. It makes so much sense once you watch it, uh, but it's a genius technique and it worked perfectly. So highly recommend that if you have problems with pattern sizing, if you have, you know, the pattern doesn't quite have your size, this is a super no brainer, easy way to either increase or decrease a, um, a pattern piece to your measurements. Uh, so definitely check it out. And yeah, again, 
fits like a glove. I want I want to make another version of this, something that I can wear more daily <laughs> if possible. Um, I was toying with the idea of like after Halloween, kind of shortening it so I could, you know, like either to the either to my knees or above the knee, uh, just so I could wear it to like a party. But you know what? I really like the way this looks as a long gown. So I don't know, just maybe I can wear it for like another Halloween or something. So that's my Halloween costume. I will be posting photos. Uh, our ho The Halloween party that we're going to is on Saturday. It's right next door. Our neighbors are having, are supposedly having a really awesome Halloween party. They're gonna turn their house into a haunted house. And the other night we were pumpkin carving. She invited me over and she invited Dennis and I over uh, to help pump, uh, carve some pumpkins for the party. So that was really fun. Um, I posted some photos on Instagram, but I'm so excited for this costume, you guys. Uh, but yeah, I also have, um, if, you're, if you are not familiar with uh, the A Court of Thorns and Roses uh, series, there's a cauldron. And what is fairer without a cauldron? So, and I also got fairy ears to go with it. You guys, how cool are these? Should I put some on? Should I put fairy ears on? Let me see. Ooh, there we go. Uh, okay. I could get used to this. I could totally, totally get used to wearing fairy ears. Uh, so yeah, anyway. <laughs> Welcome to my podcast. Um. So yeah, the costume will be complete with wig, fairy ears. I have, I don't have a crown, but I have little star um, clips that I'm gonna put in. So it's, it's gonna be magical. Oh yeah, and I also got, because Farah has a tattoo on her arm, because uh, every time someone in the series makes a bond or um, a deal or a bargain with somebody, they grow a tattoo. So I got Farah's tattoo. There's an Etsy shop that makes all these fan art tattoos. It's really cool. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna go all on my arm and my fingers and on the other side of my hand. It's gonna be awesome. So anyway, yeah, that is it for the show, really. Uh, I do have a shop update stuff. I do have shop update stuff to talk about. So um, let me see, do I have, I have to go get my, my yarn that I'm gonna have in the shop tomorrow. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm finally having another shop update, an online shop update over at www.bullandvineyarns.com. I, it's, been a month. I think trunk. Sh I think trunk show prep took over three weeks to prep for. So, but I'm finally having a shop update tomorrow, Friday, October 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, I hope you can make it. Um, I will be totally honest. It's going to be a smaller update, only because I took Monday off and I didn't get to dye as much as I would like to. Uh, but I will have. I will be having an update. So that that's the important part. So um, and I'm going to be dying more today. So, but this is what I have this week, um, or this is what I've dyed so far. So I will have a batch of Enjoy the Silence. And this is a new and improved version because as I mentioned in previous episodes, uh, Dharma, dye, uh, Dharma Trading, they, I, I get most of my dyes from them and they discontinued some of the, um, the dyes that I was using to originally dye. Uh, enjoy the silence. So I had to do a workaround and create a new new version. And you know what? I am liking this version so much better. I mean, I miss the old one, but that was a little more toned down and more subtle, but this one has like a nice little pop now. Um, but here you go. This is it on my blitzed base. Oops. I have it on blitzed and then I also have it on Nouveau. And in case you're curious, I will be having more Cocoon and some more Smitten DK in the shop next week. So stay tuned for that. If you are holding out for some of that, that will be back in stock. Uh, and then I will have some Dirty on Purpose. So here it is on Footsie and then here it is on Nouveau and then Dragon Tears. So again, yeah, I haven't had time to dye too much this week, but Dragon Tears will be back in stock. Uh, and I will, of course, have some more Grim. Uh, that sold out like hotcakes at the trunk show. So uh, if you are wondering, I will be having more Grim in the store on Friday, so stay tuned. Uh, and some other colorways as well, just haven't dyed them yet. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that is it. So October 27th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Hope you can make it. Uh, as far as other news, I just announced a new yarn club, uh, the Inner Circle yarn club so again it's inspired by a court of thorns and roses the book series i am completely obsessed with it was only a matter of time before it inspired one of my one of my yarn clubs so 
I posted about it uh, across social media and a lot of you seem very excited, so yay! Um, even if you are not into the series, uh, it's it's definitely going to be a very magical and adventurous yarn club uh, inspired by all the characters and yeah, just, you know, not all of them, but you know, the ones, uh, just a handful that have, um, you know, that I, a, a bunch of characters that I really enjoyed from the series. So hope you can make it. That is going, uh, signups are going to open on Halloween. So that's Tuesday, October 31st at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So set your clocks if you are interested. Uh, spaces are going to be limited. So, you know, while supplies last or spaces last, the Half Moon Oracle Shawl, uh, that is launching also on October 31st. And that is the, where did it go? Oh, here it is. So the Half Moon Oracle is the half pie version of the Oracle Shawl uh, pattern that I designed. And here it is. So yeah, it's currently being tested. So, so far so good. And yeah, it's going to be published October? October? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I lied. It's going to publish November 1st. So that morning I will hit publish and those of you that have been waiting ever so patiently for a half pie version of the Oracle Shawl can get your mitts on it. So this version here is knit out of, again, fill and bind yarns in the Nouveau base. In uh, this color right here is Neptunia, this dark blue is Dead Calm, and this colorway right here is Lady of the Lake. And yeah again it's like a half pie version and i know i i designed it because uh some of you were saying that you're intimidated or didn't want to intimidated by casting on a whole pie shawl which is knit totally in the round uh and requires a lot of yarn and there's the inevitable game of yarn chicken so if you're not down for that but w still want to knit the shawl this is the version for you because it is it uses up half as much yarn and it's even more quick to knit. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to make it happen and I'm so excited that you guys are excited for it uh, and cannot wait to hit publish. So yay. So I think that is it for this week. Uh, I'm gonna move along to Blather, which is a segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life. Should you care to stick around and find out? Um, but yeah, I guess the main thing is Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck weekend was a whirlwind and words cannot describe how amazing, how crazy and overwhelming it was. <laughs> um, but again, it was overwhelming in the best possible way. We left we left at a decent hour. We left at 12 o'clock in the afternoon to get there at by like two o'clock, 2.30, but there was so much traffic. We didn't get there till about three o'clock, 3.30 and setup was, yeah, it, it was it was a rush job, and by the time we were finished setting up, there were people that wanted to buy yarn already, like the early shoppers, and it was you know just it was like boom as soon as we got there, it was just like boom 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 boom. But there were so many people, so many wonderful wonderful volunteers willing to help us set up, and I cannot express my gratitude for that. It's just. They were, the whole event was just so well organized, so well, you know, aside from the, the crowd situation, it was just a very well organized event. Like Lisa, um, who runs Indian Tangle, she's just, you know, she's awesome. So, uh, you know, I hope next year that they have a bigger space so people can just kind of breathe and walk around because it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how popular that event has gotten. Um, I did not get to go to Needles Up. That was another a new event that was uh, started by Andre Sue Knits and uh, the Legacy Knits uh, girls, uh, Chelsea and Sue. Uh, I heard that was a huge success as well. So congrats, you guys, if you're watching. Uh, I, I really regret that I wasn't able to go, but it was just such a crazy day. Uh, hopefully next year I will get to attend that. Uh, it should be, I heard it was just so much fun. So congrats again. Um, and yeah, just Indian Tangled was just, yes, a lot, a lot of people. <laughs> um, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It was very, it got very, very overwhelming. Uh, not just because of the crowds, but because, um, you know, just meeting and greeting people, just like one, it was again, boom, 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 boom. Like if I, if I just turned, turned around, there was somebody coming at me like saying hello. And I like, I, I cannot express my gratitude and I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who came up to my booth, purchased yarn, or just said hello to me and it was just so wonderful to meet you and 
really I, I can't I'm, I'm not eloquent when it comes to this type of thing so um but it's just I left the event feeling exhausted very exhausted very winded but with like all the warm and fuzzies one could feel after just experiencing that um it, it just blows my mind how many people come from all over the world um, who watch the podcast who uh, you know enjoy knitting with my yarn or who have been wanting to get my yarn and finally have the opportunity to get it and um, yeah it was just so incredible and it was a, an amazing experience so thank you thank you so much um, and yeah I, I, I sold out it was crazy I brought I believe I brought 400 skeins and left with like five or seven skeins, I can't, I lost count. Um, there's like, I wanna say like five skeins left over that I'm gonna pop in the shop on Friday. But um, <laughs> yeah, again, I'm like pinching myself. I apologize if I seemed a little like loopy uh, as such events will do to me after a certain point. <laughs> but I, I promise I had not been drinking that night. I was just so utterly exhausted. Um, so yeah, if anybody came up to me and I just seemed winded uh, that, I was just, I was really tired. So, uh, but yeah, just a really, really awesome, wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, and then Ryan Beck the next day, uh, as I mentioned, we showed up early uh, around 10 o'clock, I want to say. And yeah, just, I went to the podcaster meetup and got to see my friends, some more friends that I saw last night. I got to see them again that day. And yeah. Um, and again, I, I was just, so so winded so again if you came up to me i apologize if i seemed a little out of sorts but it was just such a fun day um yeah i i, I don't know how else to describe it but uh after that yeah we dennis and i headed back we got in the car i i kind of collapsed in the <laughs> it was staged it was staged i i, I took a photo in the uh the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the fairgrounds and you know like uh, the fiber fumes finally got to me so I did a fun little photo shoot there I actually did the same a similar photo last year so this is becoming a tradition every year I'm just gonna take a photo passed out in the parking lot of Rhinebeck so yeah why not it's fun so yeah I'm trying to think what else otherwise yeah, Halloween is coming up. Uh, I've just been getting back into the swing of doing my weekly updates this week. Uh, this Saturday is our Halloween party, and not our, I'm sorry, our neighbor's Halloween party. So we have that coming down uh, the pike and Dennis is back to studying. He's got a test on Monday, another one. I think he has like three more left. So hopefully he can bang those out as quickly as possible <laughs> because yeah, he's, he's just been in hardcore study mode these past this past year and a half, I want to say. Crazy sauce. But um, I'm trying to think what else. I think that is it. Um, I've been, I just finished watching Poldark season three. Such a good series. It's on PBS. I think you can watch some of it on Amazon Prime. Outlander is getting way better. I'm, you know, I, I, I've been enjoying season three of Outlander, but it, the storyline is picking up um, and it's just so good. Yeah. So anyway, okay. I. I'm feeling very winded right now again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end the podcast there. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to subscribe below. Uh, oh, that's what I wanted to mention, I'm sorry. I unfortunately will not be uploading episodes to iTunes anymore. So I know a lot of you enjoy uh, catching up with podcasts via iTunes. However, it is a long process for me to um, get episodes to upload them and then cross over to iTunes and it's just like a long, a long winded process that unfortunately is not conducive to <laughs> um, the time that I have available to dedicate to producing a podcast. So and plus I don't have as many, especially since I don't have as many subscribers on iTunes as I do on YouTube. So I feel like that's where the crowd is. So, uh, you know, I, I hope that makes sense. And I apologize if that's where you like to get your podcasts. Um, however, I will, going forward, I'm just going to be uploading only to uh, YouTube. So um, I hope you understand. And we'll continue to follow the podcast via YouTube. And yeah, so anyway, that is it. I will leave you there. Happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye. <music>
fun for me. This is how we roll. Jen here with Danielle. Hi! Danielle's been awesome. She's been helping me out, checking people out, and she's the best. She's the best. Dennis is here too, but he's taking a break, so yay! So we just got back from Rhinebeck and look who is hanging out in my stash. Is that your stash? Is that yours? Oh my goodness, baby. I don't know about that. Oh, kitty. Ba -da -da -ba.